Hey guys, welcome to the channel and the video. This one here today is going to be my video on the latest firmware that Nintendo released, 11.0.0. We're gonna talk about what this did to custom firmware. Those of you with a modded Switch, what you can expect, what's been updated, what hasn't, what you should do. As of right now, as a matter of fact, something major has just been updated. So I'll go ahead and share that with you. We'll talk very quickly about SXOS and what you can expect at least on that front which honestly not even sure at this point and then we are going to cover the news regarding the features that nintendo added to this update because these features leave a possibility maybe for an exploit to happen via software on pretty much all switches now we're going to get more into detail on that but some people are already saying that it's happened or that it's going to happen it's just going to be a matter of time expected any day now i've seen all just kinds of bs so we're going to sort all of that out and then after the video those of you who have a legit switch that is patched or a switch light you can then decide if you are going to stay on 11.0 or update whenever an update comes out don't forget guys to show your support and keep the efforts going on the channel all you need to do is hit that like button maybe think about subscribing as well there's a lot going down with the switch you know in a ps5 scene the new xboxes old school stuff like the 3ds the vita as a matter of fact something crazy just went down over at the ps3 scene that video will be coming out after this one and actually it's something that looks like it affects all the current Sony consoles that still are connected online. So yeah, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, let's go ahead. Let's start with this video, the latest firmware update coming from Nintendo 11.0.0. All right, so the first thing that 11.0 did, for those of you that have a modded Switch, it broke all custom firmware, whether you're on Atmosphere, SXOS, or whatever. And uh, Skyrim, the developer of Atmosphere, stated that this was a hefty update, so it would take him a while to update, maybe only a day or two. To me, that's not a while. That's actually pretty quick, but he said it would be a while, just a, a day or two. So anyway, um, yeah, there was a lot of changes done to the kernel by Nintendo, but I think within a day or less, he came out with um, Atmosphere 16.0, but this is a pre-release. As is the case with any custom firmware or any major homebrews, I always tell people, hey, if it's a pre-release or a beta, try and hold off as long as you can until you know the finalized version comes out. And that's what I'm going to do on my switches. But you guys, of course, it's up to you. You can use this if you want to. Not that I doubt Skyrim's work because he always does an outstanding job. But again, this was a huge update. He did do it relatively quick and you never know, maybe he is a human being. Maybe a mistake was made here or there. So I'm gonna wait till a more finalized version and that's my recommendation again it's up to you though you can look through all the information here on the github so you can see the changes and whatever he added and whatnot by the way the homebrew launcher is also on pre-release status so is the homebrew menu they've both been updated homebrew launcher 2.4.0 homebrew menu 3.4.0 again both of those are are on pre-release status you have a few choices here to download atmosphere and you guys should be familiar with this you have the fusi primary bin which is plain jane vanilla atmosphere and then you have the atmosphere that comes with that updated homebrew launcher and homebrew menu and then you have the experimental one that comes with that launcher and the homebrew menu but this also has that mesosphere thing i'm going to do a video here soon hopefully maybe next week or the week after to let you guys know what mesosphere is but it's experimental this eventually will become the standard but because it's experimental again just like with pre-release i recommend you guys just hold off from it and just use either this one or the plain jane vanilla one you know the ones that you're used to now if you use an all-in-one package deal like i do on my switches and on all the switches that i put together for my customers then i use deep sea and deep sea just updated as well it's now in version 1.9.0 the only thing they did here was updated atmosphere to 16.0 
and Hecate. Hecate just updated as well to 5.5.0. Nix is on 0.9.6. So Deep Sea has updated those two things and pretty much most of the homebrews should still work with these two new updates. Now, the only thing about Deep Sea that I'm not too crazy about is that when you use it, you have to use the Mesosphere experimental version there. However, there is a way you can change that and just use the atmosphere that doesn't have the experimental mesosphere in it. I'm going to do a video also to show you how to do that because mine doesn't have it. I pretty much install the latest deep sea and then I just put the regular atmosphere in there over this mesosphere one. So I'll show you guys how to do it if you're interested in uh, doing that. So yeah, if you use deep sea, that all in one package deal, it's been updated as well. Then we have Hackety here. Now, as far as SXOS, before we get into this Marico stuff, SXOS, I have no idea what's going on. This is, I think, the first update since those guys got arrested. I know there are still members out there. There's a rumor that they are working on an update. Of course, they never update until Atmosphere updates. So when Atmosphere updates, then they update. So more than likely, if they are going to update it, it should get updated soon with, uh, you know, this latest Atmosphere stuff. Anyway, let's talk about this Marico stuff here real quick. Okay, so whenever you see, you know, the Marico term pop up here in these GitHubs of like Hecate and Atmosphere or in other places, that does not mean that you can run these things, you know, like you can on a regular modded switch. You still need to have a mod chip and these things still are not 100% fully functional. As a matter of fact, Skyers M clearly states somewhere here that this is still not ready for Marico. Atmosphere still has issues running on a Marico switch. So even after all of this gets done, once everything is running smoothly, you're still going to have to flash the mod chip with the firmware that is able to uh, give you the ability to, I'm assuming, install Atmosphere and Hecate and all of that stuff. So that's still a ways away as all of that stuff gets updated and we get more information regarding that. I will go ahead and let you guys know. Now, on that note, let's go ahead and move into something that maybe might be a little glimmer of hope for those of you out there that have a patched switch or switch light. OK, so we're here at Wololo.net. This article came out two days ago and it just highlights some of the features of the 11.0 firmware. There's two in particular that stand out that they go over and focus a little bit more attention on because these are the two that are kind of raising an eyebrow in the switch hacking community. The first is that it's possible to copy videos and photos from the album applet to a computer via USB. The second allows you to copy photos and videos to your smartphone or tablet by scanning a QR code on the switch. This second method works because apparently it creates a local Wi-Fi network together with the switch running a web server to serve files. So it creates a local Wi-Fi network. Then there's a web server running inside of the switch to serve files. This is definitely an unconventional method of media sharing. And this is why Wololo states that it could serve as a way for an exploit to be found that would lead to a hack. Same thing with the method up here where you can transfer uh, the videos and photos to a computer via USB. Now that doesn't mean that all of these switches are now hackable. It doesn't mean that an exploit is going to be found, but it seems like maybe there's a possibility that an exploit can be found via a software based hack, meaning you may not need a piece of hardware like a mod chip or something in order to hack these systems. Now, I know Skyers M not too long ago, maybe a month or two ago, actually stated that these Marico switches, there was no way that you would be able to hack them unless, you know, you used a like mod chip. So you needed a piece of hardware, but I don't think he foresaw nor anybody else did that Nintendo would add features that 
possibly opened up an avenue for an attack, especially since they pretty much clamped down on their security. But here we are with a couple of new features that maybe offer a ray of hope for a software based hack. So again, we don't know if that's going to happen, but as of right now, there is no hack for these switches. And in terms of ETA, really it boils down as it always has for pretty much six decades now, you can pick one of two answers. Either it will never happen or it'll happen whenever. So it's either never or whenever. It may happen in a week, a month, a year, three years, or it may never happen. So it's either never or whenever, we just have to see. Let's see what the developers say. Let's give it some time. And if something does come out of this, great. And if not, then you're gonna have to stick to mod chips. So my recommendation is if you have a patched switch, a switch light, update to 11.0 and then stay there for as long as you want. It is possible that if a vulnerability exists, Nintendo might patch it if it's patchable in 11.1, 11.2 or whatever. So you want to update to 11.0 right now since you cannot manually update a switch before they do the next update just in case they find a vulnerability and patch it. Or as long as these features exist, maybe they can't patch it. We don't know. So let's again see what the developers say. I'll keep you guys informed. All right, so that's pretty much going to end the video, guys. We covered all the topics we needed to cover. Those of you who are on custom firmware, you know what's been updated. Those of you who are on SXOS, you're just going to have to play the waiting game and see what happens. Those of you who are on a regular patch switch, you have a decision to make whether you're going to update to 11.0 and then stay there and see what happens. Maybe you have an extra switch or a switch light laying around. You can update that to 11.0 and just leave it alone and let's see what the developers say again it's just boils down to you know the waiting game anyway i appreciate you guys watching as always and if you found anything here informative helpful useful in any way or you just want to throw some love or appreciation or support towards the channel the best way to do any of that stuff is just to hit that like button maybe subscribe if you haven't already don't forget to hit that notification bell because i'm starting to put out those little youtube post things so whenever i don't have time to make a video or if there's something that comes out that's pretty Pretty important but I'm not gonna make a video about it I just want to make you guys aware then I will go ahead and post that stuff up and you'll get notified and then you can uh, go over the info and see if it's something that you can use or that's helpful to you much love going out to everyone out there be careful be safe but have fun and we will catch you on the next one